Covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. And finally, news this evening, the Bahamas for Jesus national event is some two months away, but momentum is already high for what is expected to be a major move of God. Pastors and Christian leaders coming together at the Rubius' restaurant recently to plan that three-day event. Megan Shepard has this report. The Bahamas is the third country to be a part of the World for Jesus initiative. The Christian event dubbed the Bahamas for Jesus is expected to take place on all of the major islands of the Bahamas simultaneously. Pastor of Evangel World Prayer Center in Louisville, Kentucky, Dr. Bob Rogers is inviting all churches to get involved. We're believing that God is going to do something very spiritual here in Freeport and we're also asking God to do something that will bring a financial economic blessing to this island. This uh, land's gone through some difficult times financially. One of the things God does, God not only heals people's hearts, but He heals people's pocketbooks. And He can heal this uh, city, where this city can prosper and people can have good jobs. And that's what we're believing God for. Chairman for the Grand Bahama events, Pastor Eddie Victor, says that the luncheon was an opportunity to foster togetherness and to share information about the upcoming initiative. He says so far, Christian leaders are excited. The response has been absolutely excellent. Um, everyone agrees that we need to work and to reach people for the Lord. And everyone agrees that we need to do it together. Um, um, and this is, I think, the one of the um, important um, truths that is being bared in this whole Bahamas for Jesus initiative, that we need to labor together in order to bring in this large harvest of people who can come into the kingdom of God and for their lives to be forever changed. As the event draws near, Dr. Roger says he wants everyone to get in preparation mode. What we're going to ask people to do is begin to fast and pray and get their churches to begin to fast. Uh, fasting's not easy, uh, but uh, when people begin to fast, then God begins to do something. Uh, there's no uh, secrets and no um, uh, hidden formulas how this all works. When people seek God, then God begins to hear their prayers and God heals their land. The Bahamas for Jesus is slated for November 10th through the 12th. Thank you, O oh God, for this moment right now. That you've given us, O oh God, where we can come together, make plans for the work of your kingdom. Indeed, your word reminds us that the fields are white and ready to be harvested. But Father, you're calling for laborers, and these are those who have accepted the call. Father, we are, for we know nothing and we can do nothing without you. And Father, in a special way, those that are lifting up the helm, taking the leadership, we ask, O oh God, that you will give them a special anointing, O oh God. Father, that they will direct us aright as we work in your vineyard. Give it to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We just want to welcome each and every one of you. Every pastor, bishop, apostle, um, um, reverend, minister, whatever your respected position is, we just welcome you to this uh, Bahamas for Jesus uh, luncheon. You're going to hear a lot about uh, this major evangelist, evangelism thrust that's going to take place across the archipelago of the Bahamas. And so um, we, we are just so grateful for every one of you just taking the time out uh, to be here today. I'm going to now invite uh, Reverend Chuck Brewster. Um, of the Bahamas for Jesus uh, leadership team. He's going to come right now. And I just want you to put your hands together for him. He's all the way. And many of you may not know this, but he is a former Secret Service agent. 
Yeah, right. You didn't say CIA. <laughs> uh, he has worked under four American presidents. All right, so he, he's five. five. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I got the number wrong. But uh, so he, this is a very special gentleman we have here today. All right. So um, again, um, we just thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, 23 years serving in the Secret Service, five presidents. But you know, I've, I've almost 20, almost 21 years now in full-time ministry. You know, I used to serve presidents, now I serve a king. Uh, we want to welcome you, and, and from behalf of the Bahamas for Jesus team. Now, how did we come about the Bahamas for Jesus? Well, we first went to the Philippines, and we had the Philippines for Jesus. And some of you have heard in Dr. Horvath's presentations or mine last week or last month about how we uh, uh, had over 300,000 souls saved and one day filled up every major stadium in the Philippines. And then we went to Ireland. And we had Ireland for Jesus. And it's all because of a vision of taking a world for Jesus. And so that's what you're a part of. Uh, Dr. David Burroughs over at, in uh, Nassau came up to uh, Illinois, outside of Chicago, and, and we started talking about the Bahamas, and a vision for Bahamas for Jesus was born. And you're right in the epicenter of that. As we come into November, the dates that we'll give you, uh, November the Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, uh, 11th through the 13th, I think it is, we're going to be trying to impact the whole Bahama Islands and all of Freeport. And it's not just us, us, you. We're coming to help equip the saints in order to really let you understand that we're here to help bring a revival to the Bahamas. Do you think we need that? Oh, yes. I've been told that 85% of the Bahamas are Christians. Well, I know in the United States we have a percent too, but I know one of them got one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world. And we're going to try to get them both situated back in the kingdom of God. And so that's part of what this thrust is about. It will not work without you. It will not work without teamwork. It will not work with one church. It needs to be all churches. The Bahamas, according to Dr. Burroughs, was telling me, is the gateway in the Caribbean. The gateway of the Caribbean, therefore, you need to come to the gateway before you can go on. See, you know what's coming next? Caribbean for Jesus. Because as we went to the Philippines, and thousands of pastors got involved. Then all of a sudden when we went to Ireland, those Filipino pastors were came to Ireland and started helping in that endeavor. And now we're going to have Irish coming into the Bahamas as well as the Filipinos. And we're going to have a lot of teams going in every island, every city, every town, every area. We are concentrated on Freeport. Grandpa. Amen? Amen? And so we want to invite you to uh, uh, listen up and, and see how we can involve you in this. Dr. Bob Rogers pastors a large church in Louisville, Kentucky, over 9,000 members. He's got a worldwide reputation of prayer and, 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 and fasting and speaking at all major churches. He serves on Dr. Young E. Cho's board uh, with the CGI Church Growth Institute and we International, Church Growth International. And he is also president of Church Growth International of the Americas, CGIA, and which I serve as a board member on, under him as well. And what we try to do is bring about growth in churches not large epicenter churches, but every church, no matter the size. So Bob Rogers is going to speak to us. This is how we're going to do it this morning. Are you hungry? Yes. All right, I am. And uh, so we're going to eat. And as we're eating, about 10 or 15 minutes into eating, Dr. Rogers is going to come up and talk to you about how you specifically can get involved, how you can help the team, Eddie Victor, Pastor Eddie Victor has been our point guy, has been helping us getting everything organized. 
But you know what I need is about 60 point guys. I need about, you know, 20 or 30 chairmen of different areas. We need worship guys. Where is that? Alexandro. He's back there. And Kim's over here from Larry's church. You know, I'm starting to realize who people are. That's dangerous. I'm watching you. Anyway, but uh, but we have our we have a lot. It's a great gathering, isn't it, Bob? It's a great gathering. Bob's daughter Rachel Rogers is here with him all as well today. She's a minister in her own right. Naomi Whitehouse. No, she's not from the White House. It's just her name. <laughs> she is Bob's admin and takes care of all the details. And she she gets right down into, are you saying you're going to do it? You know, because sometimes. We'll say, yeah, 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 but she's the one that gets it right in writing, gets it down to it. So if you see Naomi, know that you're you're being recruited. And right here to my left, you know, I, I've got Kedrick Tembo. Kedrick's from Zambia, but he lives in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we call him the Prince of Louisville. His grandfather was the king of Zambia. And so he's royalty. So we try to hang around him a lot, but he doesn't rub off. You know? So anyway, but we welcome you and hope you have a wonderful luncheon and we're going to have a question and answer time afterwards and if at any point you need to slip out, just, you know, try to, we're going to keep going here uh, for another hour or so. So, you know, let's uh, organize. How do you want to organize, Eddie? The, uh, the closest table gets their food first? Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Nice. That's why they sat there, Eddie. Yeah. That's the way we do it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know. All right. There's a buffet line. Back there, and uh, and uh, just start that table back there, and then come on and just move on up here. We'll get ours last. All right, you ready? To eat? Any questions before we start? Are you in the right place? You think you're coming to a restaurant? Yeah. It's a banquet. It's a king's banquet. So, Lord, we just bless this now. Let's let it go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and start. sick or not, my dad believed God would heal when he prayed for me, God healed me whether I wanted to get healed or not. But uh, as I was growing up, the one thing I didn't want to be was a preacher. And I know some of you who are sons of preachers, maybe you've had some of those similar experiences. But I was going to be a lawyer and help all those poor preachers. And uh, God... Uh, God has a way of changing your mind. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And we already have too many lawyers, yes. but we don't have enough preachers. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. So I have, uh, I went into the ministry and I began to pastor a little church in Lexington, Kentucky. 
I was a single pastor. I was going to seminary. And uh, our church, our church was so small and uh, that, uh, that I got paid after all the bills were paid. And so after not getting paid anything for uh, a little bit, I decided to take a special love offering for the pastor uh, on Sundays. So my first offering was $5. My dad said, well, poor preach means more, more pay. But I honestly didn't have enough money to eat on. So that's how I started fasting. It wasn't a uh, volunteer fast, it was a forced fast. So I started visiting people about dinner time. And I'd come over and knock on the door, old Pastor Bob, we're just having dinner. I said, oh, I've come at the wrong time. They said, oh, no, 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 come on in and join us. I said, well, thank you very much. That worked pretty good for a while until I, I went to these uh, two old maids. And they said, well, Pastor Bob, come on in. I said, uh, we just got our food from Meals on Wheels. And uh, help us out. I said, oh, I, I didn't know you got your food from Meals on Wheels. I said, I wouldn't eat your food. Oh, go ahead. It was uh, it's Mexican food, and we didn't like it. We gave it to the cat, and the cat threw it up. So please just help yourself. But that's how I got, I started fasting. And uh, when I started fasting, though, things began to change in my life. God began to speak to me. God began to do things that I never had done before. And so what I'm asking us to do, I'm asking you to join me in fasting for Bahamas for Jesus. There's no secret on how a revival comes. It doesn't come in a bottle. It doesn't come with someone who comes and preaches. It comes when people begin to humble themselves and pray. So what I'm asking you to do is to not only do this personally, begin to organize your churches and your people, to take a day a week to fast. Now that day a week, if it's a Monday, every Monday. If it's Wednesday, every Wednesday. But you fast on that day. It becomes your fast day. And sometimes when you have children, it's difficult to fast after say, uh, for the evening meal, but you can fast in the, at least of that evening meal. And when you do that, God will begin to do something on your behalf. God will do something in your church, and God will do something here in the Bahamas. Now, Dr. James Horvath and I went to school together. His uh, father was a uh, CPA for the Mafia. I don't know if he ever told me his story. But uh, he and his brother were Olympic divers. And God radically saved Brother Horvath. And God called him into the ministry. And we uh, ended up getting our doctorate together at Oral Roberts University. And God gave him a great vision. And that vision was for revival to begin to go across and around the world. So we went into the Philippines and uh, I took the city of Cebu. Cebu is actually the wealthiest and the second largest city in the Philippine Islands. We went there and we rented a large casino. It had a huge auditorium and the crowds began to come we had the largest Christian gathering that that city had had. And then a year ago, we went to uh, Ireland. And the city that we were assigned in Ireland was Droghead. Droghead had a very interesting uh, thing about that island, about that town. It was the one of the largest centers of suicide in all of the world. It uh, rated number two in all of Europe as a destination for people to commit suicide. They would drive to Droghead 
and they jump off a bridge. They drive to this town and they would have killed themselves. And so God gave us such a revival. They told us it was the largest gathering, a non-Catholic gathering in the history of Ireland there at that city. And I believe that God is going to do the same thing here in Freeport. Come on, if you believe that, say amen. Now what we're doing and what we're going to believe God for is number one, God did not only save our families. How many have members of your family that need to be saved? Can I see your hand? Well, some of you lift that hand you said, well, Brother Bob, that'd be a miracle if my son got saved. That'd be a miracle if my daughter got saved. Well, it was a miracle when you got saved. Here's a miracle when I got saved. But I'm here to tell you that this is a, a time that God wants to do great miracles. Hallelujah. So not only are we believing for a real miraculous move of God in our family, and I want you to believe God that every member of your household shall be saved. But the second thing is, I am believing and fasting that God is going to send an economic revival here to Freeport. I tell you, the devil's behind poverty. God's not into that poverty. And God has the ability to take out of you what the devil put in you and put back in you what the devil has taken out of you and put on you what the devil has taken off of you. And God is going to do that in the name of Jesus. I remember when I fasted my first time of 40 days, God spoke to me and said, I called you to reach the poor of your city. I said, Lord, I don't want to reach the poor of my city. I've been poor all my life. I'd like to reach some rich people. Uh, and the Lord began to deal with me. And uh, I remember we had a hiccup in our church. And I lost a lot of my Mercedes crowd. And I lost a lot of my Lexus crowds, but I didn't lose people. The crowds kept coming. There were Hispanics. There were uh, people of color. And I was looking out the window. Let me get this straightened out here. That's a devil in a That's a poverty devil. Hallelujah. <laughs> stickers and bailing wire and I said oh God those people are so poor and the Lord said I know please just leave it alone just turn it off I said I said Lord those people are so poor and the Lord said I know I sent them here <laughs> I sent them here for you to preach uh, fasting and prayer and uh, and prosperity and I'm going to heal them. And I'm going to prosper them. And so we opened up a center to feed the hungry. We began to feed the people. And in uh, about uh, three months, the director came to me and he said, uh, Brother Bob, he said, uh, we're out of food. I said, well, I'm out of money. And he said, well, I'm going to go close it up. I said, no, you're not either. You go down there and give them a cup of cold water in the name of the Lord. So he got down to the Lord's kitchen, and when he did, a fellow had killed a deer. And uh, so he said, I had this deer butchered, I thought maybe you guys could use it. So we mixed it with Hamburger Helper, which I think is illegal now, but uh, <laughs> we fed the people. 
And the next day, God did another miracle. And the next day, God did another miracle. And that was nine and a half million meals ago. We're feeding right now over 50,000 meals a month. And I believe that God has anointed me to pray for people to prosper. In our church, we have, not only have we fed uh, millions of people, more than anyone in our state, but God has helped raise up people of wealth. And God has given me an anointing to pray for business people and to pray for pastors to bring the money in. And that's what God's going to do in this meeting. Hallelujah. Now what we're going to do in the morning, we're going to have morning meetings. It's going to be the Bahamas for Jesus School of Ministry. We're going to have classes on uh, Monday morning uh, from 10 until noon, uh, on Tuesday 10 until noon, and those that attend both sessions will receive a certificate of completion from the School of Ministry. Also, we have with us one of America's most outstanding musicians who's coming here to help lead uh, in the choir and uh, the praise and worship. His name is Shake Anderson. Shake Anderson won a, uh, a triple Grammy for writing Dr. Doolittle. He wrote all the music for Matrix. He wrote uh, all the music for, uh, for uh, um, Blue Street, those different movies. He's uh, done work with the Supremes. He's worked with uh, uh, the, uh, Diana Ross, B.B. King, and he's a spirit filled, full of, the, full of the presence of God uh, musician. So he's coming in on a Thursday prior to the meeting. He wants to meet with uh, the musicians. And then on Friday, he wants to meet with the praise leaders. And then on Thursday, he wants to meet with the choir. And we want to have, or, or, or on Saturday, with the choir. And so we'll have a large, uh, a large choir. Now, I want to, um, I want to uh, say that we need we need uh, people who can help us. And if you are a music director, uh, we need to get your name so we can uh, contact uh, contact you and get to shake uh, uh, in touch with you. We also need those who serve on a committee, a prayer committee and also a social media com uh, committee. So we're believing that God is going to do some powerful and great things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now one other thing I want to say, I pastor a large church. I have 38 services on a Sunday. So I, I, know, I know what it is to, uh, to have church. But I'm not coming down here to have church. Because i got enough church where I am. And also, I'm not coming down here to build this one or that one or this one or the other or hurt this one's feelings or that. Um, if you're into that, get over it. We're here to have a move of God. And we come together as one. Amen. And so I've asked the uh, brothers to help us uh, get everything lined up, and um, and we're just going to believe for a great uh, move of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to bring uh, some of the most powerful men of God, and their areas are going to come with me, and uh, so praise the Lord. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? You. Yes, stand up, introduce yourself. Stand up, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Bob Turner. 
Yeah. The sad stuff comes to your 38 service on a Sunday. Yes. Help me understand that. That's a good I have figured out myself. Uh, <laughs> I have multiple locations. And uh, I have uh, Hispanic churches. I have uh, French speaking churches. I have uh, Russian speaking churches. I have many locations, and uh, if I can't get somebody to come to me, I go to them. So that's how we do it. I've got some locations, I do five services. Somebody else? Yes, sir. Could you stand up and introduce yourself? Yes, sir. This one can go next to something or next to the team to begin the process that we spoke about on Monday and Tuesday. Actually, it starts November. Oh, November. Yeah, November the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Right. And so the week prior is when um, so we come in and get everything set up. So you'll be sending information to us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This is why I need you to. Uh, all your uh, information there. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I want to say a great big thank you to um, our host, brother, brother Eddie uh, Victor. Has he done a great job? <laughs> Chuck uh, Brewster was uh, head of all the security for the Democratic Convention for the Olympics. Uh, he's been not only five presidents with them on their securities, but many other presidents as they come in and out of the and leaders. And uh, I think he's done a great job coming here and helping get things set up. And let's give him a great big job. Kedrick, stand up just a moment. Actually, Kedrick's uh, great 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 grandfather was Shaka Zulu. How many ever heard of Shaka Zulu? <laughs> great Zulu warrior, and then, uh, all his cousins are kings and have five and six wives. And he's the only one who got the only has one. <laughs> Amen. And my daughter here's uh, Rachel. Rachel, stand up. Looks just like me. And, uh, <laughs> Rachel manages uh, one of our TV stations. We have a television station in Israel, and it's the only uh, Christian station in uh, the Holy Land. And it's real interesting how we got that station. I fasted for 40 days, and God spoke to me and said, I want you now to fast till Easter. And it was 100 days. And I said, and I'll die too. And uh, the Lord uh, spoke to me and I showed me how to do it. I fasted one meal a day after that. And then God told me to go to Israel. And I met with the head of the Palestinians. And uh, there was a lot of issues going on. And I told him I'd help him with the drug and alcohol program if he'd let us build a station. We built one in Bethlehem. And so it's the only Christian station in all of the Holy Land. I think we ought to give the Lord a <laughs> All right, any more questions? How many believe you, you'd like to be a part of this uh, homage for Jesus? Can I see your hand? Well, what's going to happen in Freeport? We're going to have the greatest move of God here in Freeport. I don't know what they're going to do in Nassau. <laughs> I'm going to pray for them in Nassau, but it's not going to be any better than what we have here. Yeah. We're going to all of these different islands, but right here is going to be the epicenter. This is going to have a whole lot of presence of God here. I feel that's a prophetic word. And um, so we're going to start that, uh, we're going to start the whole Bahamas for Jesus. Right off here in Freeport. Uh, 
Naomi is kind of the nuts and bolts person. She puts it all together. Naomi is going to need to see those who are the musicians. Are you head up your uh, praise and worship? She needs to get some that information from you. Also, if you'd be interested in serving on a prayer committee. Because listen, that, if we don't have prayers, nothing's going to happen anyway. Amen. And, um, and we'll fast. And some of you may feel that we fast more than just one day a week. But uh, I pray you will. And then uh, there are several other of these. What's the pardon me? Social media. So if you can help us in those areas. It's like young, we appreciate it. <laughs> All right, is there any desserts out there? You, any food left? <laughs> you haven't eaten yet, Bob. I'm oh, good. Yeah. Let's give Bob a hand. <laughs> Anybody get a book, one on one? Somebody didn't get one? Right there, he had yeah, our worship guy did not get one. Uh, uh, John, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, I want to ask you a question. Are you clear on the date? It's Sunday night, November the 11th. Monday morning, 10 a.m. to noon, and then again at 7 at night, or 6, I'm not sure what the right time is yet, with a, with a full crusade. And then Tuesday morning, from 10 to noon, and that completes the school part, which you get a certificate for. And, and uh, then uh, Tuesday night will be the concluding service. Is that right? Yes, yeah. right. And, and then and the venue is confirmed to be Jubilee Cathedral. And that seats the uh, most that has what we need as far as TV and to reach the whole lot. Let me, let me just say this. We don't want it to be a church celebration. We want to reach the yes. people of the yes. Bahamas. Yes. So we're going to do a printing campaign, and Eddie's going to help organize leaders that can help get the word out, get some things to invite invites. In evangelism, between now and November, we want to be able to let everybody know Bahamas for Jesus. Hashtag Bahamas for Jesus. There's a website, Bahamas for Jesus. There's a Twitter account, Bahamas for Jesus. But getting your churches, you are the pinnacles. You're the, you're the leader of a church. You have a lot of followers in your church. It can't just be lip service. It has to be motivation. That this is something that's going to bring our country together. Bob said it succinctly that we're fighting a demon of poverty in Freeport that I don't see in Nassau. That's why Bob God is bringing Bob and his anointing, his ministry into Freeport to tear down that wall of poverty. <clears throat> the Chinese don't own Freeport. Right. The Bahamians own Freeport. But God loves each and every one. So what we're going to need, if you're a head of a whole congregation or whatever, Get your churches motivated to start promoting it and getting people excited about it. Building evangelism team. Get the youth involved to start doing uh, youth outreaches on the streets. You got yeah, yeah, youth is back there. Social media team. Go ahead. That's the, the purpose of the church is to reach the least of these. I come from Brownsville Assembly in Pensacola, Florida, big revival there uh, a few years back, but we're right in the center of the poverty of the, the uh, poverty center, the least. Let me see, how can I say this? Scambia County is the poorest county in the state of Florida, and Brownsville is the poorest city within Scambia County. 
So I know something about helping those that are in need. We want to give them uh, an exposure to the love of God, the love of Jesus. We want to be able to feed the needy. We want to be able to provide that. In, in Florida, we have farm share. Uh, all the farmers give a share of their crops. And everything is very biblical. It comes from our church. We give away 45,000 pounds of groceries every month. We feed, not as big as Bob, we're a small church. 500 people on Monday and 500 people on Wednesday. That's all we can take, handle with a church congregation of three or 400. But I, but I can tell you here, yes, we're going to meet the needs. But you know, who meets the needs for the needy? Churches? We're not here to raise funds to bring Bahamas out of poverty. We need to raise our spiritual walk. Remember when I said we, we're all Christians, but how many of you got no feet in the kingdom? You know, how many of your congregation are living a duplicit life? So, I mean, I think that what we need to really do is in our pulpits, when you're planning your, your sermons, is kind of build toward Bahamas for Jesus. We're not here to impact you. We're here to help you impact the Bahamas. We're only here to help equip you and put this vision together. And like I mentioned before, the Bahamas are the gateway to the Caribbean. So following this is, you know, we got teams going into Cuba. We got teams going into Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, maybe no that's the United States uh, area. But uh, we got teams going into every other parts of the Caribbean at different stages during this fall. But we want you to be the premier location. I want Freeport to show the way. Show the way. And we're going to get some media coverage. And we're going to get uh, uh, Christians working together to harvest the kingdom of God. Are there any other questions for our leadership team? Or How many would say, I, I want to be one of the leaders that helps put together a certain area? You know, if you do, I don't see many hands going up. But anyway, if you do, okay, I got it. I want you to talk to Eddie Victor. Eddie Victor has been very key. You know, he has a ministry, he works at Ministry of uh, Tourism. Yeah, that's one of my hats. That's one of his hats. He's got several hats he's wearing. <laughs> and so, but he's going to help coordinate the different people that, the committees. And then, how many have got WhatsApp on their phone? Oh, yeah. Everybody in the phone. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is to have as we get closer, maybe every week or two weeks, a WhatsApp conference call. Everybody's on that thread, and Eddie's adding who's on that thread, so that you know what's going on. We're not hiding anything. We want to make sure you're aware. Jim Horvath will be on that thread as well. But we'll send out something, okay, we need to find out what's happening with this, or what's happening with that. We get on WhatsApp, and we get answers. And so, we need to really, uh, who has questions now about what they can do to be in really totally involved? We haven't got that much time. September, October, two months. And you know what it is, you get busy in your church. Now, how many think that the uh, Jubilee is a good location? Is that central to everybody? Is it, is it is a location that we can work a I know their air conditioner works, amen? <laughs> And, and I know that we'll, they're going to their 20th anniversary. Is that Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I think culminating Sunday morning. They're going to be worn, slapped out. But you know, that's when God shows up. Yes. Gives us strength. So if you want to see Natalie, if you have further questions about worship, and we want to put together a huge... Naomi, I've done that many times. I have a woman in my church named Natalie that does all this. So anyway, I get confused. Anyway, Naomi. That's all right. Bob didn't know the date. So anyway, I, I got you. You had it right. I know. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Father, we thank you for this time together. We ask you, Lord God, now let's put our heads to the problem. Yes. Figure out all the obstacles and overcome them. Father, we ask you, Lord God, to bring about a time of prayer and fasting, yes. setting all the things in motion that we can 
bring about Bahamas for Jesus. Time is short. We love you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.